Welcome back. In this video, we are tackling an important topic for anyone building or consuming KPIs, which is rate limiting and throttling. Whether you are preventing abuse, managing server load, or ensuring a smooth user experience, rate limiting is essential. Today, I will explain what rate limiting and throttling are, how they work in REST APIs, and how you can implement them to protect your API. Let's jump in it. So first, let's just try to talk about rate limiting. So let me make, yep. So first we need to ask the what. What is rate limiting? Rate limiting is simply controlling um, how many requests a user or client can make to your API in a set amount of time. For example, if we have a client, this client can send too many requests to the server. So you might limit users or the clients to 100 requests per minute. Once they hit that limit, any additional requests are rejected in this minute. This helps prevent abuse and ensures your API stays stable under heavy traffic. So the clients can cannot send too many requests. And when the crowd, when the client go beyond the limit, we send him a 492 requests, which is too many requests. So. Let's ask the second question, which is the why. Why rate limiting is important. So without rate limiting, your API could easily be overwhelmed by too many requests, which could crash your server or degrade performance. It's essential for stopping bad actors, managing resources, and making sure everyone gets a fair access to your API. Number two we want to talk about, which is Throttling. Throttling. So what is throttling? Throttling is a bit different. And instead of completely blocking requests once the limit is reached, throttling slows down the rate of requests. It's like putting a speed limit on your API to ensure requests don't flood too quickly. Um, okay, right now, I guess it's important to talk about the types of rate limiting. Let's go here. There is multiple way of rate limiting strategy. There is token bucket, which is the token are added um, steadily and each request consume one token. And for example, uh, once and if no tokens are there, the request is denied. So uh, let's say that we have this application that has only three tokens per minute. So the application can only request make three requests per minute and each request they can take one token. Um, there is also um, a, leak, a leak token which requests enter in the bucket and it's it's a quite similar to the uh, to the 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 bucket token uh, leak bucket sorry the requests are processed in a concentrate rate if the request come in too fast the bucket overflows and exceeds requests um we have two things which is the um, the sliding window and the fixed um window and the sliding window, um, a more precise method that calculates requests in continuous moving time. So um, we need to make sure that like we capture how many requests in previous time frame and we calculate the current weight and after that deny if the weight exceeded the rate limiting. Um, there is the, f um, the, uh, the fixed window which this counts requests in a fixed window of time, like 100 requests per minute, but users can post request at the start and the end window. So because of that, the sliding window helps to manage this to solve the problem of the fixed window. 
So um, let's talk about implementing how to implement a rate limiter. So this is a code example in in uh, in Node.js or Express on how to implement the, um, a rate limiter. So you you require you implement express rate limiter. You have um, you limit uh, uh, each one minute max one hundred requests and return a message too many requests from this API. Please try after one minute again. Um, the best practice for the rate limit is, is, is that we should set the appropriate limits based on your API's traffic. Always provide users with information when they hit uh, the when they have hit the limit, and monitor your API's performance over time to make adjustments. So in today's video, we explore rate limiting and throttling and, uh, and throttling essential tools for protecting and optimizing your API. In our next video, we might cover, um, I don't know which which other things we are might cover, but like there is four or five things we should cover. Um, bu 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 let me think, let me think. I guess, yeah, yeah, we cover in the next video, we cover caching and REST APIs, and also we'll cover after that microservices, and yeah, and after in the end, we go with the best practice in, in, uh, in REST. So that's it for this video and see you in the future.